Welcome to our last panel of the day. This is our image panel where a bunch of image creators uh, and uh, image staff tell us what it is like to have a book published at Image, what that means, what the process is like, uh, and helpful things that may enable all of you one day to get your own book published at Image. We hope. Um, so we're just going to go down the table, starting from my far left, and our panelists are going to introduce themselves and tell us about their image book. Is this thing on? It is on. Um, uh, my name's Greg. Hing yeah, kind of. <laughs> you just answered it. Comics. Is this better? No, it is yeah. better. Thank you. Sorry. I'm Justin. I draw the fuse for Image Comics, like a, uh, like a procedural, traditional procedural, but set on a space station up in orbit. And it now houses about half a million people. And our story is about the two uh, murder detectives who have to find who did it when someone's killed. Uh, I'm David Brothers. I'm the only non comics creator on the panel. I'm branding manager at Image, which means that I run imagecomics.com. Uh, I run our iWord podcast and our magazine Image Plus, which is pretty much all me getting to talk to people who know stuff about comics and picking their brains. Yeah, and, and you do something else too. Yeah. Oh, and I edit Lazarus with Greg Rucka and Michael Lark. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It really is. Uh, yeah, David's always understated. He does a lot more. <laughs> Uh, my name is Nick Dragata. I'm the co-creator and artist of East of West. Uh, I'm Jeremy Saliba. I am co-creator, cover artist, and editor of Blackjack Ketchum at Image Comics. Uh, and I, I wrote that Blackjack Ketchum uh, for, for this guy over here, uh, also at Image Comics. I have my own mic. Uh, I'm Jason McNamara. I co-created The Rattler with Greg Hinkle down there. I would describe it as a... Uh, it's kind of white knuckle hell ride uh, to the bottom of the soul. <laughs> What's that? Where are my pages, creep? How would you describe the book then? It's describing our relationship. <laughs> Mr. Mike? Uh, I'm Greg Rucka. I am uh, uh, the author of Lazarus and Black Magic, both published by Image. Lazarus is co created with uh, my collaborator, Michael Lark. Uh, and Black Magic uh, is co-created with my collaborator, uh, Nicholas Scott. And, uh, yeah. I don't know what more to say. That's all right. I have questions. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's have them then. All right. So um, how did each of you come to be working with Image in the first place? Anyone can start. Uh, I can start because mine is kind of a funny story. I don't know, hopefully funny. Uh, can you all hear me okay? Okay. Uh, so I was hired, I don't know, three years ago as a content manager, which is another way to say copy editor because Image had never had a copy editor in like 25 years. So it was my job to catch the typos, make sure pages were like, you know, like print DPI and CMYK instead of anything else because sometimes that would happen. And uh, I did that for a while. I started working with Greg on Greg and Michael on Lazarus. I worked with Ed Brubaker a little bit. And somehow they gave me like complete control over the panel programming at conventions, and like that worked out. And then the website, and now a print magazine. So I'm not sure what's next, but it's kind of how they I They discovered here. that you are a good public face for the company is what they discovered. <laughs> uh, my start came from Image because I saw no future in work for hire, and I needed to own something, and uh, I just, you know, right time, right place, and my co-creator is Jonathan Hickman, who is one of the more popular writers in comics, so to not do it would be a huge mistake, and it was one of the best things I've ever done. I, I found myself as an artist, uh, doing my own thing, and drawing what I want to draw. Yeah, I was working on a book with Anthony Johnson, who's my co-creator on Fuse, and we were doing a book called Wasteland. I was just filling in, though, for like an arc or two. 
And uh, when I started the second arc, we just worked together really well, and um, we're having fun. And he said, hey, you know, I've been talking to Image about doing something. You know, are you interested in working on a project? And um, we put our heads together and just found the, the right one. Uh, I, I worked with James Robinson on, on Airboy. We knew each other from San Francisco. We'd shop at the same comic shop and buy comics together. And he ended up getting a, a hold of one of my self-published mini comics, God knows how, um, and said, I want to I work with you on something sometime. I said, okay, just send me a script. A couple of years went by, and he finally sent me a script, and we put something together, and he decided that, that Image was the place for Airboy. And, and after Airboy came out, we, uh, Jason and I had already finished the Rattler, published it through Kickstarter, and we thought, you know, we, we should really put this out there for, we'd really like to get more eyes on it. We'd really like to share the story with more people, and since I already had the you know, semi-working relationship with Image, we figured we'd try and take it there, and it, it worked out, so. Uh, Jeremy and I uh, had been doing comics for a while, and we did a three volumes of a, of a book called Ultrasylvania that was initially a class here at the Academy. Uh, and we did some we did Kickstarters for all three of them. We were able to take it around the country going to shows and met some just extremely generous and friendly folks in the industry along the way. And eventually one of them, uh, it was at San Diego Comic Con, grabbed me by the scruff of the neck and grabbed uh, Eric Stevenson uh, by the collar and pulled, put us together. And, and uh, he basically said, yeah, you want to talk to this guy? And then uh, about six weeks later, uh, we'd sent Eric uh, a pitch for Blackjack Ketchum, and he said, yeah, let's do this. Plain and simple. Maybe not simple, but plain and simple. Uh, I'm Jason McNamara. I mentioned that part, right? Uh, I've been self-publishing and doing indie books for about 13 years. So after once I worked with Greg on The Rattler, I realized I had a book that had more commercial appeal than probably anything else I did. Um, so we were very, very lucky uh, to be Welcome to the Image family. Uh, after being in the wilds for as long as I was, I appreciate the opportunities and the sort of platform and the family and how hard they work. Um, so it's been really, uh, it's been a nice sort of, it's been a nice transition, sort of to come in from the cold, to put it in a dramatic way. <laughs> I, um, I had a meeting with uh, Eric Stevenson uh, it was one of the last WonderCons that was in this town because it was 2009. Um, and it was shortly after I'd announced a uh, departure from DC and I said I had this idea for this book. And he said, well, we'd be very interested in it. And then Michael and I went off to try to get this book done and three years later came back to Image with a completely different book. Um, uh, the, the initial book had been called Black Magic and um, we couldn't, couldn't make it work. And then uh, I, I, was, I saw Michael in Dallas. I was in Dallas on, 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 on a book tour for a novel. And uh, I said, I got this idea for this other thing. And this is a woman, and she gets shot and gets up. And he says, That's, I want to draw that. <laughs> so I literally got home from the tour and I think emailed Image. And it was like, so I have an idea. And... Got the email back being like, you, Michael, and this thing? Yeah, go ahead. So I was like, cool. I'd never had that experience before. It was, it was extraordinary, so. And, uh, James Robinson had Airboy. You said this was something that he wanted to take to Image. Why Image as opposed to anywhere else? Uh, I think he, he'd, he'd been talking to Eric Stevenson a lot um, about doing some creator-owned stuff and we really couldn't have taken the book anywhere else, to be honest. Um, he, he had the, the idea for the book before I think he fleshed it all out. And um, shoot, where was I going with that? It, it really <laughs> <laughs> working with Image allowed us the freedom to do the crazy stuff that we did um, without having to 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 check ourselves and rein ourselves in and, and run it through an editorial department. and um, We got to do whatever we wanted to do, which was nice. Um, and James kind of had the clout to, to take it where he wanted to. So it was, it was all James's fault. <laughs> <laughs> and Jason, after doing a successful Kickstarter, 
uh, with the Rattler. Uh, what made you want it to then go through a traditional publisher? I did not want to go through a traditional publisher <laughs> at all. Honestly, I wouldn't. We, if we didn't do the book through Image, we just wouldn't. I would have self-published it. Um, I have that skill set. Greg and I have that skill set. If you can run a successful Kickstarter, you can self-publish a book. Um, doing a book through Image is um, a step above that. Um, I think coming from the self-publishing world, you can navigate their sort of system and that sort of entrepreneurial spirit is in line with what Greg and I had created in the first place. We don't ask for permission. We want to do work that we believe in, that we are passionate about, and we're never going to ask anyone's uh, permission to do what we want to do. If you go through most publishers, they want to put their stamp on something. They want to have some sort of fingerprint on it so it matches their brand. Image's brand is be your own voice, and that is incredibly appealing. I think that's, that's remarkably apt. I'm fond of saying that the great thing about Image is they will sell you all the rope <laughs> um, and, and you can do any number of things with it. You can make a fantastic noose or a glorious hammock. Um, <laughs> and it's entirely up to you. And basically, they've got people there, you know, who are more than happy to step in. But nobody's, nobody's actually going like, yeah, that, that's going to be a little tight around your neck. But there is somebody there where you can say, I'm having trouble with that knot. And they'll be like, okay, yeah, we can help you. You know, and, and I really do appreciate that, that there's a level of, you know, I spent a long time working for DC. I did a lot of work for Marvel, and I've done a lot of work for Oni, and even the work in Oni Press, I've not had the level of creative control that we have on, on Lazarus. We put out the Lazarus source book this last month, or this month, April. And never in a million years would we have been able to do that anywhere else. Never in a million years, and every single page of that book, including the covers, including the IFC and IBC, all of those things were decisions we made. Everything about it, that's us. We did that. And like I said, that's a lot of rope. And you can get real tangled up in it, but you can also get exactly what you want out of it. And that's, that's really wonderful and rare, honestly, very rare. I think that no brand thing is kind of Image's greatest strength because like, everyone on this panel knows how to make comics. Like, our job is to get out of the way. Half the time when Greg asks me, like, does this seem too mean on Lazarus, I'm like, well, you could make it meaner. You know, but I'm not going to say, like, oh, no, maybe forever should hug this person. You know? it's, this, is, like, this sort of thing is amazing. In my, you know, maybe that makes me sound crazy. But, <laughs> but I mean, in terms of getting to do what you want to do, how you want to do it, <laughs> that's the fun like I mean we all like comics and it's sort of like getting a front row seat to people creating at their highest powers yeah I think like you you'll find you find yourself as like an artist or a writer because you're really just bearing like who you are and you're not having any editorial input one thing we're not talking about is the money I mean I like money <laughs> and if you can sell books at Image, you are going to make money. You get to keep 80% of what that book makes. So um, like Greg was talking about earlier, you know, the monthlies may not do as well or look like they're competing with a Marvel or DC title, um, but then those trade sales come out. Uh, so it's just there's all new business models emerging all the time in comics, and I think Image is at the forefront right now for creators and empowering them and owning your work and profiting from it, the creators profiting from it. I don't know of any company, I mean, across all media that treats talent like this. It's unheard of and it works. You know, Image seems to be doing well and the creators are doing really well. Um, so, but you know, like Greg said, you can hang yourself too. If a book doesn't sell, sell or doesn't catch on, yeah, but you did learn every aspect of making a comic. You, earned, you learned the business of comics. Um, and then you can take that back to a Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, and, you know, properly price a rate or something. But, you know, it's all good. So. And Brian and Jeremy, uh, unlike most of the people sitting at this table, uh, your very first monthly book was through Image. Uh, how was that hands-off approach for you? Uh, it was terrifying, uh, for the most part. <laughs> hey, can we make a book? Yeah, make a book. And that was it. That was, that was the bottom line. So 
uh, we had to put on our big boy pants and, and, you know, look at deadlines and look at the team and, and manage it all and, and have that level of excellence that we imagine uh, is at that level and try to aim for it. Um, so, I mean, I was in a constant state of terror for however long of the year or whatever it was that we spent working on the book. Um, any little blip that comes in the road was a complete disaster. I was basically like a teenage, you know, drama, uh, uh, dramatic person uh, the whole time. Oh no, no, this has happened, what do I do? And uh, we would just hold each other and, and then get through it uh, uh, um, one way or another, and then calm down, but really, ultimately, oh, it's gonna be fine, you know, whatever. Um, but uh, at the same time, yeah, I mean, we, there was no, there was no, I mean, I've worked a little bit here and there with other publishers and stuff, and there's very heavy hands-on opinions in, in, in terms of what's allowed, what's not allowed, you know, whatever, and here it was just whatever we wanted to do, and that is very exciting. I mean, you know, again, it's our first real big experience was, was having that, so uh, I can't imagine what it's going to be like having different experiences uh, uh, somewhere down the line, but um, it was, we got to make it exactly the way we wanted, just like everyone up here is saying, and, and just like Greg was saying, uh, it's a lot of rope. <laughs> you know, uh, it's all you. They, no one else, you can't blame anyone else if something goes wrong. So um, uh, uh, that's very thrilling and exciting. Really cool honor to be a part of. Two things that, that this man at the end of the table said to me uh, right after the book got approved. Uh, one of them uh, was to stick the landing, meaning, you know, do the, right, do the story, do the best story you can do, do what you want to do, and just make sure that you tie it up with a nice bow, uh, whatever that means for the story that you're telling. Uh, and on the one hand, that was great advice. On the other hand, it haunted me. It haunted me for the better part of a year <laughs> while we were putting that book together. Um, and I like to think we did stick the landing. Uh, and the second part was uh, when I told him that you know, we, we got the green light, uh, you, 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 I told you that I was, you know, on the one hand, excited, on the other hand, terrified. And you have, you'd spoken about this uh, earlier in another panel, which is having that fear, having that sense of, of, oh God, this is really happening, and there's no real, there's no quitting, there's no backing out. I mean, who am I going to quit from? I quit from myself. I'm going to quit from Jeremy. Well, no, I'm not going to do that. And that fear will, you'll get so much mileage out of that. I, I, it, it's, it's, it's something that you can't really describe, uh, in, in textbook fashion uh, until you're like actually in the, in the, in the mix with the deadlines uh, that are self-imposed. That's the other thing. Image will, you know, they'll give you the green light, they'll give you the book, they say, yeah, go ahead and do it. And it's like, okay, go off and make me this thing and then come back and we'll distribute it. There's no, it's not like I'm getting an email from Eric Stevenson once a month saying, where the fuck's my book? No, it's like I didn't hear, I didn't hear from Eric again for like six months and that was after, you know, m you know me knocking on his door. Uh, so it's, it's, yeah, it's, you are out there in the wild, but you know that in the end, when you've, when you've, when you've crafted your story and it's beautiful, uh, and you take it to them and say, hey, we're ready to go, uh, then yeah, they, they are behind you 100%. Uh, Justin, you work on uh, two different books with two different collaborators for two different publishers. Yes. What's that like? <laughs> it's a bit like, uh, I was gonna make a joke, but actually it's pretty awesome. I mean, I'm super lucky. I was going to say something mean just because Greg's at the other end of the table, but, uh, it's all right, I'm out of reach. you know, <laughs> I mean, di working with different writers, it's like uh, everybody has their own take on it, their own way to tell a story, and half the fun is trying to figure out what that is for each writer and, and serving that and telling the story to the best of your ability, but I was just sitting up here thinking like, oh, what, why Image Comics for me, like what was important about it, and um, I remember like I, I wanted to draw Wolverine when I was a kid. I was like, man, someday I'm going to draw the most badass Wolverine book ever. And then uh, in 90, I guess it was like 92 or 91, um, I was at WonderCon. And I was like 13 or 14, probably older. And Image Comics launched. And it was like, these dudes were like rock stars. I mean, they were so badass. And they were coming out with like all these books that um, were like my 13-year-old dream of comics. Like every one of them was like a, the power rock star book and I thought man someday I want to do that and my my goals changed at the, I mean really literally from that convention to doing something like Wolverine or X-Men book or something to doing something personal and creative and creating something on my own and it's uh, publishers like you know Image and Oni that helped do that so it's pretty rad. Uh, David do you want to give us a look kind of behind the curtain once a book gets accepted at Image what happens on the inside? Uh, everyone's like, oh, geez, we're publishing that guy? <laughs> <laughs> in, like, in a good way. Um, like at Image Expo uh, this year. 
like I got to meet Howard Chaikin, who is you know a titan as far as I'm concerned in comics, and he was just he was actually like really charismatic and charming, but like being able to put out his work is always exciting because he always has something to say, and I feel like he says it in interesting ways. Um, but no, it's wild. We so we have like different departments. There's like marketing, production, and then uh, sales, and I'm kind of like a barnacle on all three because I have the website thing going on. But each one, they're like, okay, here's, uh, your book's ready to go to press, all right? Here are your deadlines. Here's, when you, if you get us this book on this date, it'll go to press on this day, and then it will print on this day. Uh, sales, you know, they set FOC dates, and they say, like, okay, we're going to call comic shops, like, for the next week and a half and say, you've got to buy this comic for this reason. It's sort of like, it's like an anthill, like, where everyone has their own responsibilities. And we all know what we have to do to get the job done, but we all still really like comic books like there's still you know we sit around like I've got a Hellboy sticker on my door you know and it's cool because I work at Image but everyone likes Mike Mignola so nobody really goes like oh you got you got to re represent the brand better it's just <laughs> no it's like comic books are great that's what it comes down to and then uh, like marketing will set up interviews and podcasts and all, all this crazy stuff uh, we're in the middle of convention planning now which means that I get to say, like, oh, I want to talk to X, Y, and Z on stage. Like, how can I make that happen? And the answer is just email and ask, <laughs> which is crazy because, like, Todd McFarlane drew my first comic, and then I did a one-on-one -on -one chat with him a uh, year before last at Image Expo. So it's kind of surreal at the same time. Uh, I think we're going to take some questions, if there are questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so does image pay artists according to like, you know, how much there are out there? How much, you know, I don't know. How uh, I mean, it, the, it varies. Some, some artists get advances. I can only really speak on mine. Uh, me and Jonathan went in as 50 50 partners, and I didn't need the advance. Uh, I was actually working a full-time job doing like concept illustrations for uh, an engineering place in the city here, um, but I was really drawing east to west during the day. <laughs> and uh, so, but I just liked, uh, n image was new to me and I was skeptical, you know, I was like, I don't know what this is going to be like. And I asked the accountant, can you just split everything down the middle and I see everything, I see what's sold and yeah, that's what they did. That's how they set it up for me. I have friends that uh, get a, an advance. Like, they don't have any money saved up, and they're going to take a chance with Image, and they're paid in advance. Um, but I think that's like, if Image is banking on, they know they're going to recoup that advance. Um, so I think everything varies there, you know? Um, so, you know, I, I can speak from experience that we were not offered in advance. Uh, we were not as, as established of a name where we're newcomers, so there was no discussion of that at all. And, if that's the case, that uh, if, if you uh, get an image book and you don't have a, a name built behind yourself yet, they'll say, okay, have fun, make a comic, uh, and we'll publish it for you. Yeah, I'm, I, I can't speak to a broader example. I know that on each of the projects that I'm doing with image, the artists take an advance. The artists take differing advances. Michael's advance is larger because Michael uses that to pay a fairly large staff that supplements the art creation. Um, I don't take, uh, I, I, I don't pay myself until after the book earns. Um, Nicola uh, does the same, right? But Nick is also, you know, she lives in Australia. She's married she's, and she's got people that she's paying as well. So my, my experience of the image <clears throat> system is that if the floppy earns out, great, that's ideal, it's terrific, but they're actually planning on, even if you lose money on the floppy, they're planning on making it back on the trades. Um, I think what Image has done with trade marketing uh, is incredibly robust. I think Marvel and DC are stupid to have not followed suit. I think the 999 first trade for ongoings is a stroke of genius. Um, the best selling comic I've ever written is Lazarus Volume 1. Um, because <clears throat> retailers can be like, here you go. And somebody's like, well, it's 
a lot of pages and it's 10 bucks, I'll try it. It's, it, it really is low risk. Um, so, you know, I mean, the only really, the other thing that you don't hear about it, image has a service fee, that's the one thing. So, in a way they are sort of like a, um, like Halliburton would refer to uh, themselves as a value service provider. There is a sense that image is, image has, well, image is, I think it's, what, it's $2,500. And it's, it is effect, it's effectively the image service fee. And, and that's not to say and then they eat everything else. They don't. When the book is accounted, you get, okay, this was how much was the advance was, this was how much printing was, this was shipping, this was damages, this was... And these are then all the sales and the digital markets and the return, everything you've got. So that, you know, everything has to balance. And then on top of, in, in the owed column is an image fee. But it's not a usurious fee. I mean, it's really not, I think, for the work they do. For, for, yeah, for, for the work they do and for what you get. I don't want to have to talk to Diamond, ever. <laughs> I, they can have $2,500 to do that, you know? So. Yeah, I mean, that, that fee also, like, uh, gets you in, like Greg was saying, in all the bookstores. It goes out international. Um, so the potential of reaching that wider audience is way greater than just doing it yourself, and it's it's 2,500 bucks is like deal done. And then it's 20% on trade. So you're paid on your monthly um, and that's two months after your book hits shelves you get paid. So if you plan on doing this, you really do have to plan ahead. Imagine to make the comic is gonna take at least a couple months. And then once it goes to the printer, gets into shops, you're looking at maybe another month or two and then you're not gonna get paid another two months after that. And then once you have trade, you have enough issues built up to do a collection, you're paid in accruals every six months. That's book sales, that's the book market, and then the digital sales. Um, so there's all these revenue streams can start to happen, um, but it's, you know, it's difficult. It's difficult, but like, you know, once you get a lot of work out there, these books may not be burning up the sales charts, but 3,000 copies on a trade, uh, when you have 10 trades out, you know, 30,000 total a year, that's like real money. So like you, it's like a real investment. It's difficult. You should, I think like starting out now and looking at these new models of how creators can make money, it is definitely, that's why I always say like, do your own thing at some point. Because Marvel, DC, they're, they're good steady checks and they pay well. Um, but you know, to own your own thing is really the way to go. And I think to get longevity in this, I saw an interview with Jonathan Hickman where he said no one retires at Marvel in DC and that's why he wanted to do creator owned stuff because you need to plan ahead. Well, I mean like one person will retire from <laughs> Marvel. You know, we all know who that is. Right, yeah. right. It's, it's, you know, like, I mean, it's just, it's like there's a, there's a handful of guys that do really well and the rest are really putting in the work grinding. So. No, it's all it's all advanced. Okay. Yeah. Like they, you pay printing. Everything is deducted out of your account, but they cover all that. So they're they're if they if they want to publish your work, you know, it's great. Like they really believe in you. And I mean, I do also do a thing called Haltunes. I don't know if anyone has heard of that. Probably not, right? It's my children's educational comic. Uh, if you want to make money in comics, don't do a children's educational comic. Um, <laughs> But like me and Eric were like, yeah, Eric liked it. And I was like, all right, let's do it. And uh, we went out and hired Tom Fowler and Fred Van Lente to create like a new how tunes book. And I went in the hole a lot, okay? And I'm like, I was like, this is the first time I ever lost money at Image. And I'm like, Eric, what, what do I, what do I, are you guys gonna start taking it out of East to West? He's like, no, we believe in it. We, you know, we set this up. We think it'll sell over trades over after a while. And now they have, um, you know, Jeff Boyson is head of book sales, and so he shops your book at different book conventions and libraries, and it ended up getting picked up by Scholastic. And then they put an order in of like 25,000 copies, and now it makes money. You know, so it's like there are people at Image working to sell your work, like, and promote it and get it out there. That's what that $2,500 goes towards. So if they agree to publish you, they believe in you, and they're investing in you. Um, so it's pretty special, you know. 
uh, that came out as a, a graphic novel. It didn't come out in monthly issues. So how is that different? It could have come out as a miniseries. Uh, it actually breaks into four equal parts. But we published it originally as a graphic novel, and we felt like it read better as a graphic novel, and Image was willing to take the opportunity to publish it as a graphic novel. So we could have probably done it either way. But we, as a reading experience, we wanted people to get on that ride and never get off. And Image was like, yeah, let's do it. No problem. It's more of the freedom that Image allows, is that we could do it as a graphic novel instead of four single issues. Yeah. It, it wasn't the reading experience we wanted people to have, and we got the support from Eric and the team to do it the way we wanted it to be absorbed as a piece of work, as a whole piece. Just, just to double back on that, that's like a really common misconception too, that like you pay them money to do your book. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, that's why I'm no, I don't think they're picking up anybody. I think they're carefully choosing what projects they come out with. I mean, David probably speak to that better, but um, it's not an accident. They're not like, well, you know, we'll take your 2500 and <laughs> produce this book because that's cool. It doesn't I'll just, really work I'll like just that. put it in my pocket here. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah the, um, the submission process is run by Eric Stevenson, our publisher, and he's the guy who looks at all the submissions. He, you know, I think everyone here on the table has like an Eric Stevenson story uh, where it's like you'll say like, hey, I have an idea, and he's like, great, let's do it, and that's it. Um, it's really... Yeah, pretty much. Um, I mean, new creators are old. Uh, we do this magazine called Island Magazine that uh, Brennan Graham and Emma Rios run. And see, somebody out there likes it. Uh, it's awesome. And there's, it's full of people who have done like maybe one or two comics. Like Amy Claire, uh, I love her stuff a lot. She did this story <laughs> called Stray Light in there. And it's like her first real comics work. She was in art school. Uh, she got dissatisfied with illustration. And she found a love for storytelling. And like now she's an image creator. So it's just a matter of, like, is the comic good or not? Is the comic cool or not? More so than, you know, just publishing anybody willy-nilly. Like, there's still a plan, you know? But the plan follows, like, what we're sent. Yeah. I've not gotten the impression, uh, I could be wrong, but I've not gotten the impression that, um, that Eric rubber stamps people. I, I, I've always gotten the impression that regardless of who the creator is, he looks at the idea and, and, and makes a determination based on that pitch. I am pretty sure I could come to him with a pitch at this point and have him say, uh, no. Yeah. Um, and I honestly think that's a good thing. Um, I, I, I don't want to be someplace... I, I don't want to be someplace where anything's taken for granted, if that makes sense. So I think one of, and like I said, I could be wrong. It's entirely a perception. But I think that there's a democratization in that, that if you, can, if you can put a good idea in front and you can demonstrate the ability to execute it, and that is part of it. You can't just show up and say, I've got an idea for a show. Um, because Eric's going to be like, uh-huh, have you ever done a show before? And be like, nope. He's going to be like, maybe you ought to come back when you've got a couple under your belt. But if you can present, you know, some degree of, you know, some, some element of body work, something that says, yes, I know what I'm doing and here's the idea. I know how to make this. I think the idea gets a fair viewing. Yeah. Like I said, I could be wrong, but that's the impression I've always gotten. The, the, from the point of view, like, again, we hadn't had a, a much of a career beforehand. When uh, Brian got introduced to Eric Stevenson and he said, yeah, send me something, we had several pitches ready to go and sent him that because we were <laughs> hedging our bets and thinking, okay, you know, when, when that chance does come, we should be ready. And so we had a few different ideas to see, you know, which one would hit, which one would land. And he definitely picked one. This is the one. I want to do this one. And we moved on from there. In general, I would always have your pitches ready to go. You never know who you're going to run to. Yeah. So, and practice uh, them. And, and I can share with... Um, Jim Zub told this story at Emerald City, so it's fair to repeat it. But he said, so Jim Zub does Skull Kickers, Wayward. Uh, I think he's doing the new Street Fighter comic, if y'all are into video games. 
Uh, but he said, like, he didn't have any new series for like three or four years. And he said, it's not because he wasn't pitching, it's just the pitches weren't landing right, that he couldn't find traction. And he's a dude, like, he's got a fan base. Like, he's on a, he did like 40 or 50 issues of Skull Kick or something crazy like that. Uh, Wayward is a hit. You know, it's been translated into Japanese and French already, but he still had to show and prove with the idea. Like, there still had to be something solid there for Eric to be like, all right, yeah, this is the one. Like, let's go with this next thing. Image is actually, though, one of relatively few publishers that has open submissions that you can theoretically email in cold. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know, is, is that something that's been followed through with? Are there books that have been picked up through people just sending an email? Uh, Jonathan Hickman, yeah. I mean, he's, you've read Secret Wars at Marvel and Fantastic Four, Avengers, all this crazy stuff. Like, that wouldn't have happened if he hadn't sent in the nightly news. At which Eric and I think maybe Eric Larson. Eric Larson was like, we should hire him as a graphic designer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Stevenson was like, no, I think the comic's good. But, like, you know, Jonathan is using himself as a model. And uh, he, he can't draw very well, but he was just getting it done. This is how passionate he is. And so he modeled in every panel and, you know, is photoshopping the, the pictures to make it look like it's drawn. And yeah, I mean, it had striking graphic design, like which he's known for too. And uh, Eric said it jumped out and was like, you know, I'll publish this guy. And you know, Larson was like, yeah, hire him as a graphic designer. I'm not sure about his comics. <laughs> so. Yeah, there's a huge stack right in front of Eric's desk when you go in the office. Like, yeah, it, he must hit it sometimes, you know. I don't remember exactly what we have on the site, but there's still like a button, I think at the very bottom it says submissions, but it's like finished art, uh, the exact creative team you're gonna use. Like don't say it's gonna be like me and Alan Moore and Frank Quitely doing a comic because that's obviously a lie, you know? <laughs> um, but it's really just, it's about sending in or putting your best foot forward is how I phrased it in the panel earlier today. Uh, like a script's not enough. Like a script doesn't tell us anything about a comic except what the characters might say when it goes to press. Um, but you just want to make it as comic-y as you can, like finished art, not, not concept art or anything like that. You want to see storytelling. And also like having, like proving you know like how comics work on a storytelling sense, on a printing sense. Like I have a five issue series, uh, in issue five it ends and the story's done and then we can move on to something else or I leave it open for issue six if it's a hit. Like you just want to be prepared on every angle pretty much. But uh, check the website just to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think your submissions too should be, um, your production value should be just as good as what's on the shelves. Because Image is expecting that. Like there's no holding hands. If you get the go ahead, you're, you'll get a deadline to when your book's gonna go to print and you have to have it done by then. I mean they do have a production staff that will help you, but they're pretty busy, you know? Like I don't think you can go in and wrench too much, but you know, if you're not a letterer, go out and hire a professional letterer. Go hire Russ Wooten to do your logo. You know, like, really give it a professional finish. Um, I would, that would be my advice. Uh, I can actually, Eric just addressed this in a speech at Comics Pro, I think. He was saying that uh, crime, sci-fi, and horror are kind of like at a saturation point right now. It's not that they're bad genres, like there are tons of great crime, sci-fi, and horror comics, but if, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Like, if you want to be ahead of the curve, like, you can't do the next Hunger Games. I remember when we, we pitched Fuse, we were like, oh, this book is so original. It's like a sci-fi crime story. And at the time, seriously, like, even three years ago, it was pretty original. It was like, oh, this is cool. But uh, you get to a rock and hit a sci-fi book now. It's just all over the place. And that doesn't make it less cool, but it, what it is, like, they're probably looking for something fresh at this point, you know? Yeah. I was just watching an interview with the gentlemen that are directing the, uh, uh, that Civil War little, little indie film coming out uh, next week. 
and they were talking about going to Kevin uh, Feige, is that how you say his last name? And uh, how they were trying to challenge the format of their Marvel movies, and, and he was reluctant, I guess, because they had a format that was working, and they said, well, everyone tells you they love chocolate ice cream until you give it to them five days a week, and then they start getting a little tired of it. So, uh, uh, yeah, anything that's, that's huge and, and doing really well right now, that tends to be someone who's starting off, it seems to be they, that's what they look to as inspiration. They go, I want to do that too. So they pitch. I mean, uh, well, uh, early on when Brian and I were doing some uh, pitches and doing some self-published stuff, one of our things was a zombie western. And uh, I think, where do we hear it? So we heard it from somebody uh, saying, yeah, Image will look at anything except for zombie books right now. Because they kind of had the zombie book thing covered. And we were like, oh, okay, well, let's try another, 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 another pitch then. Because that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if, if you're inspired by something, that's great, but uh, uh, you'll have to either make it, if it's going on, if there's a lot of it in the industry going on, you'll have to either make it completely unique from what's going on or, you know, find a way to add some crazy twist that you would never expect, and that might be enough, too. Otherwise, you have to come up with, uh, uh, there's something, one thing that Brian and I do when we start to put together pitches, we look at what's missing, you know, what's not out there in, in, the, in, in the industry right now, uh, and I don't know what it is right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add to that and say that, yeah, it's good to look and see what's not out there, but by God, don't just look to fill a hole uh, because, shut up, uh, because that, then you're, you're, you know, you're one step away from pandering, you're one step away from, from uh, uh, I'm going to make, a, you know, you're, you're, you're Scrooge McDuck and you've got, uh, I'm going to make millions of dollars because I'm doing a, whatever, we're doing a, a, a psychedelic western. Uh, no, that you do it because, oh, there's no psychedelic westerns out there. Oh, let's see if they want to do this, because I think it'd be a lot of fun to do. You go ahead. Um, I would just say, don't try and please any publisher. Like, look to you. What is the book that you want to discover? Right? Yes. We're all searchers. We're all looking for a story. What are you not seeing on the shelf? Make that book and worry about who's going to publish it later. Write the story you want to write. And then all this other stuff. It's great, but you can get your stories out there. If you try and tailor something to what you think is going to get published, you're already uh, constraining your creative process. I, I know I, I, people don't believe me when I say this. I never think about what, I'm, what the next story is in terms of genre. I, I never do. And I am, I am probably about as genre a writer as you're going to find. But I don't think of myself that way, and I never think about my stories that way. I didn't look at Black Magic and go, it's going to be horror. Um, and I didn't look at Lazarus and go, it's dystopian sci-fi. Um, you know, th those, those are the labels that get applied to it. Um, I'm, I'm really a firm believer in... And, and because otherwise you're chasing the market, and you're going to lose if you do that. You've got to write the story that you want to write. That's the story that you've got to tell. Um, and... And if you're honest and you do it well, then, you know, then, then hopefully, you, hopefully you find a home. When you and Seth, and Seth say that you need to write a character that hasn't been written in the way that um, anyone else has before to get a new perspective on things rather than theme. I missed, I missed the first part, I'm sorry. Um, when you say rather to create a new Well, I think it's going to depend on what, what works for you, right? You know, I don't tend, most of my work I don't tend to approach thematically at the beginning. I, I work from character almost universally from the start. The only time I really ever have written anything going, I want to write about this issue thematically and I'm building around it, um, was really in the last couple of years and I don't think it was terribly successful, but that's for me. That's for me. Um, if you know, if there is something that you are looking to explore and you want to therefore construct the story to, to best explore it, then by all means do it. I find that for my purposes, I meet the people of the story first and they always dictate. And in meeting them, I, I, I start to discern theme and, and, and all of the highfalutin arty terms. I think just touching on that too, I mean, if you're, if you're like, oh, I want to find the thing that nobody's doing, you're not really going to have an original thought. You're just like problem solving what doesn't exist rather than coming up with something 
of your own. You know a book I always think is a, is a really good example is like Paper Girls. And you guys read Paper Girls? Like I love the book. And, and every time I read it, I, I'm like five issues in, I think they collected. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, I don't know what genre that is. I don't, I don't even know how you define that. But I love it because it's just a really well-told story. I mean, really done perfectly. So, I mean, you just tell your story as perfectly as you can and don't get hung up on, um, you know, trying to do this kind of story or that kind of story, you know? I know with our book, I mean, it's like I just draw whatever I want. Sometimes it's horror, sometimes it's Western, sometimes it's science fiction, sometimes it's just talking heads and people walking from point A to point B. Yeah, it was romance, comedy. I mean, and like I dive into all that stuff. I want all those tropes in there. Like, so it's like just do your thing and you'll find, like Greg was saying, you'll find it. The themes will come out and, you know, and I can look back and say, oh, our book is a reflection of our times and all this stuff, but... You know, it, that comes out. Um, so in the, in the last minute or so before we have to wrap it up, um, creating comics is really hard, especially breaking in and especially in a creator and arena where you're given a lot of freedom. So David, do you want to tell us a bit about Creators for Creators? Yeah, this is uh, technically separate from my duties at Image. It's a grant that uh, Nick Dragata and I and 16 other creators co-founded, something like that. Basically, the short version is um, we want to give 30,000 bucks to a new comics creator to make one book between 64 and 100 pages. Uh, submissions open tomorrow. We've got flyers on the table. But the entire goal is to kind of, like you said, comics are hard. Like, they're great, but they can be really difficult. And this is a chance to not just help, like, one project come to life, but also increase, like, everyone's body of knowledge. Because we have like a mentorship aspect where we'll tell people like, hey, like, these are what rates are like right now. Like, here's how to negotiate a contract. Here's how to uh, like figure out your collaboration. Like, are you going to split it 50-50, 60-40, 100-0? Like, how do you want to how do you want to do things? I don't suggest 100-0. That's not a good deal. It's not really called a collaboration. That's that's not even a job at that point. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so submissions will be open for six months, so you don't have to rush and get something in next week. Like, take your time. Uh, we want to see five pages of finished art, a uh, proposal, a bio, kind of like who you are, how you came to comics. And the hope is that a year from now, uh, there'll be a fresh new comic on the shelves. We'll have a bunch of posts on our website about like, how to get buy in comics on, from every level, like legal, business, in addition to creative. And hopefully, make comics a little bit easier for everybody. Thank you, and yeah. thank you to all our panelists.